On today's episode of That Motorcycle Show, we're here at the Hollywood Hills at Gilby Clark's house. He's gonna show us how to make a sissy bar. My name is Dylan Hoey, and if it has two wheels, then I'm into it. I'm on a mission to find customs you can build in your own garage on a truly realistic budget. From V-twins to metrics, sport bikes to dirt bikes, we're gonna learn to customize them all from garage heroes just like yourselves. So grab a wrench and throttle down. It's time for That Motorcycle Show. What's up, guys? We're here in Los Angeles, California at legendary guitar player's house, Gilby Clark. He's got some really cool bikes, and we're going to learn how to make a sissy bar today. Hey, Gilby, it's Dylan. This is awesome. Gilby's got a great collection of bikes. He's got one of the last bikes made by Jesse James at West Coast Choppers. What's happening, man? How are you? So anyway, this is uh, my uh, West Coast Knuckle uh, that Jesse built. It's a 41. It's an EL that's been bumped up to uh, to an FL, so it's uh, 74 now. Yeah. It's a pretty sweet ride. I, I made nice. this recently. Yeah. <laughs> my little uh, sissy bar, which we're going to do a little bit later today. And uh, I had to put a sleeping bag and a tent for a little trip I did. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to go from this to this today. Gilby's going to show us how to make a sissy bar, also called a sister bar. So uh, basically what I'm going to do is, um, I originally made struts for this bike um, and I'm going on a camping trip and I need to make a sissy bar, you know, I need to hold all my stuff so we're going to take these off. Obviously we're going to have um, the 516's holes there to work with and these are 3 8 uh, here but I'm going to use them for 516's, okay. I'm going to make a little, little device. We're going to use 3 8 rod, uh, solid rod we're going to bend and we're going to make another set of these uh, little stays right here, these little okay. sleeves. And I don't know what we're gonna do up here. <laughs> we'll figure it out as we go along. Go I, I go have some along. ideas, we'll see if it works. Yeah, you know. absolutely. Why are we using 3 8 instead of like half inch or something? Well, um, oh, uh, here's um, Is that a preference or? You know what, I'm just kind of getting into the skinny thing. Yeah. I mean, if you look, it's a skinny bike. Skinny tire, um, yeah, absolutely. Exactly, you know, th this is half inch. Yeah. The reality is, you know, I'm, I'm not putting my old lady on the back, you yeah. know? I don't really need, I mean, even though that is pretty strong, I don't really need it that strong. To me, it just looks slicker with yeah. the three eights. It's certainly strong enough, you know, to hold, like I said, hold a, you know, camping uh, bag, a sleeping bag, a tent and all that. But uh, it's more of a look thing for yeah. me. So we're headed down to, we're gonna go to Osh. My metal supply is industrial metal supply, but they're kind of far. Yeah. And um, I was so surprised when I walked into friggin' Osh one day and they had all the rod. Oh, that's cool. And not only do they have the rod, but you, when you get it from the supply, it's got a thicker coat on it, which yeah. you gotta grind off yep. and all that. Their rod is perfect. I just kind of clean it up a little, you know, and, oh, and cool. we're good to go. See how straight it is just by rolling it, same way you do a pool stick like Gilly was just saying. That'd be long enough and you can weld them together and stuff, but that's no fun, man. It's, you gotta have the bend. They need a hollow. Yeah. A hollow. Osh has chrome parts already. One less step, less cost. All right, so we got what we needed. Let's go bend some metal. Right now, he's cleaning up the bar. It's just easier to clean it up now instead of bending it and then trying to clean around the curves and the angles. It's more of a pain. This way, clean it up, that's out of the way. You've got to have clean metal to do the welds. Yep. And when you start bending, it's hard to get in all those tight spots to clean it. So that's why I just do it in the beginning. Bar about that high? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. I'm thinking like a, you see, I'm at about 24. Yeah. That's kind of what right I'm thinking so about 24. Right so all we're gonna do is we're gonna measure it, and we're at about 52 inches. Uh, so we're gonna I'm gonna just measure it in half because we're gonna do the bend first. <laughs> all right, what Gilby's gonna do, and he's gonna walk you through this. Uh, he's gonna heat up the metal and anneal the metal so it's super loose and flexible. 
he's gonna put this bar on top of it and bend it back to get the angle that he wants. Basically just looking for a triangle. Yeah. That, that's all we're really doing. I'm only using map gas because once again, this is a garage thing. This is not yep. professional. Most guys will use uh, acetylene torch, which goes and it's and hot. It's done. It's gonna yeah. take us about two or three minutes to get that baby uh, hot enough. So at what point do you know it's hot enough when it's red? When it's, when it's, when it's totally yeah. red? When it's okay. Red, yeah. So but for you guys out there that are trying to do this, when it's red, bend it. You're ready, yeah, yeah. exactly. I kind of heat it from all sides. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if it makes a difference. But... All right, you can go ahead and turn it off. All right. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. There is the bend. And see how I'm trying to keep that line as tight as I can. Look at that bend. just about perfect. I'm gonna take this out and I'm just gonna go cool it off in a little agua. All right, what he's doing, he's just making sure everything's flat and level on the ground. It looks pretty good. It looks pretty damn good, man. Yeah. Now, what I'm gonna do is I wanna even off the ends. And you can tell how, see how that just fits really even in there. It's gonna fit the yeah, same way both ways. So I'm gonna mark this at 24. Clean enough the cut he just made. Because hopefully these are gonna be the last ones we yeah. do here. Oh, hopefully. So you can do this on a Saturday in your garage. Yeah. And the wife knows where you are. You're in the exactly. garage. You're not out, you know, doing hookers and blows. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. We're here at Strange Days Rod and Customs for the tip of the week. A great tip is if you have the weld sitting here, what we do is we put die kim on it. So that's kind of in essence like a blue spray paint. What is yeah, it that? It is. Uh, you can buy it any major tool supply. And what it'll do is as soon as you get the weld down to the surrounding material, rub sandpaper across it. And you can see the little dimples and lows in it. Now you could grind those out, but we'll actually work them out more. See the little highs and lows? Yep. Now these are not so bad that you couldn't just sand them out. Yeah. But what it does, it, it'll, it'll show you the really bad places. And then you can go back and hand hammer on it a little bit, shape it a little bit with a hammer and poly, and it'll come out great. Let's go check in and see how the build's coming. So yeah. what what got you into making sissy bars? Was it just for yourself or, or you now the king of sissy bars? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm slowly becoming the king of sissy bars yeah. around here. Um, just for me, um, I'm just, I'm still a beginning welder. Yeah. Um, so it's just a way to just learn how to, you know, do some things for my bike. And I like being creative. I like trying to make things that I haven't seen before. Too. Absolutely. So. That's the best way, make it yourself. So next thing I'm gonna make is these right here, okay? It's gotta be two inches, so I kinda do like two and an eight it is, give it just a little. I'm using a, a pipe cutter. Um, I know that I can uh, you know, whack it real quick with that. The problem I find when I do whack it with that guy is I have to do so much more cleaning up with it. Yeah, that. this is more of a clean cut. Yeah, this is a better cut and you just do very mild, mild cleanup. Where are we cost-wise right now? Geez, let's think about that for a second. I'm pretty sure the rod was, what, like 10 bucks? Yeah. And um, I think that this uh, the sleeve material is probably the same, probably about six, maybe eight dollars. Yeah. Um, if, if we do decide to use these little bungs, you can buy uh, from like Bung King or uh, even Crow Customs makes them. Mm -hmm. um, these are about three dollars a piece. So if you wanted a shop to do this and turn this out for you, I mean, you know, turnaround time is a consideration and cost is a consideration. You know, what is something like this? I, I think if you bought one of, if you bought a stock one from like Paco or something like that, I think they're like about $150. Yeah. If you had someone make them, it could go up to about $300, yeah. you know, maybe even more. So you can do this on a Saturday in your garage. Yeah. You have that pride of, you I know, made that. I made that. It's a Somebody comes up piece. to you. Absolutely. Somebody comes up to you and says, "Well, man, where'd you get that sissy bar?" I also say Gilby, but <laughs> but you can also take pride and go, you know, I made that. I actually physically made that thing from scratch. 
So. And the wife knows where you are. You're in the exactly. garage. You're not out, you know, doing hookers and blows. So. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, what we're gonna do is these are gonna be sleeves that fit up here. And like I said, we're gonna either put a, a piece there which will be shortened, or we're gonna use one of these guys right there to mount on the fender. And like you said, it's just aesthetic. Yep. Just and it just it, looks cool. It looks yeah. it looks pretty industrial too. Yeah, exactly. It know? just looks a little different, you know. This is basically what we're gonna do. So we're gonna take one of these and we're gonna flatten this out, okay? okay? In the vise? In the vise. So we're gonna flatten it in the vise and then uh, once I get the flatten, unfortunately what's gonna happen is because it, there is a seam in there, that yeah. seam is gonna open up. Okay. Okay, so after that seam, when I try to bend it on that seam right there, I'm gonna re-weld that. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna re-weld that and then I'm gonna re-weld that end right there. Closing it up. Closing it up so it's solid again. If I stick this whole thing in the vise, the whole thing is going to flatten out. Right. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a rod in, in there, you know, to hold that end together right there. So this doesn't really have to be that precise, you know? Yeah, because you always grind off any yeah, extra I'm, and Yeah, like exactly. Yeah. And then I'm going to stick my little guy in here, which I told you I marked off an inch. Yep. It's only the first one that's a little hard. Yeah. See, and this is what he was making the end result. Didn't split, that's awesome. Yeah, we're lucky. And that's, <laughs> that piece is gonna go. There you right go, that's here. that piece right there. That's what we'll end up like, looking like. Gonna go right there. Back in the uh, late 80s, we had the cat house. Yep. And the cat house was a huge hangout here, and uh, we all rode our bikes to the cat house. Yep. I mean Welcome back to That Motorcycle Show. Is this heaven or what? We're here in Dallas, Texas at the International Motorcycle Show on a multi-stop tour where they unveil all the latest models from your favorite dealers. Let's go check back in with Gilby, see how the sissy bar is coming along. Back in the uh, late 80s, uh, early 90s, uh, in the LA scene, you know, when, you know, Motley Crue was happening, yep. Guns N' Roses, LA Guns, Faster Pussycat, we had the Cat House. Yep. And the Cat House was a huge hangout here, and uh, we all rode our bikes to the Cat House. Yep. I mean, it was every Tuesday night, we all had a blast. So back then, everybody was riding. Over the years, things changed, and being a cool, long-haired biker guy wasn't in, in fashion. Yeah until uh, you know the TV shows hit again. So yeah. uh, now I'm, I'm seeing a lot more guys you know, slowing down and you know, going to Sturgis and taking the rides. Yeah. Um, I chose a TIG welder because my cousin has a MIG welder. Which one do you like better? Work well, a TIG is uh, way more precise. You right. know, you can get uh, tighter welds, uh, the heat is better. With a MIG, it's basically you're, you're tacking a big blob on there yeah. and then you gotta grind it off. Yeah. Basically, what I'm gonna do is get my uh, my arc, and I'm gonna feed it all the way back that way. Okay. Wow. It's really hard to get it on that line, you know. Yeah. It, it works. It's fine, but uh, it's hard. All right, guys, we started out with this piece right here, as you can see, the hollow piece, and now we're to this point. See, great weld, cleaned up really nice. Gilby rounded it off right here, just cleaned it up really nice. We're gonna tap it and then drill a hole in it. There, that'll give us five sixteenths. What we're doing now is we just took off the struts. We're gonna tape up the holes just so we don't mess up any of the paint. So there, there is no science to this. This is gonna be a lot of guessing. Yeah. Because, you know, I, I really wanna get that like that. 
but I also need that angle out enough to, to bend into that. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend these guys first and then just start squeezing. Okay, uh, what we did first is uh, obviously we put the sleeves on because once we bend, there's nothing we can do. We're going to be bending uh, this in this way to fit on the bike, so I've measured three inches from the bottom on both. Um, there is really no right or wrong way of doing this bend because basically what we're going to do is, like I said, bend these in to fit on that there. So I'm just going to bend them a little bit in and we're going to end up tweaking them a couple times yeah. and stuff. Um, you can do it cold, but since we got the heat, we are going to heat it a little bit, right? That looks good. I, mean, I think I can live with that. Yeah, absolutely. So basically, uh, this is my version of spot welding because we don't want to see anything when we put these little stays on. Right. I drilled a hole in and I'm going to drop some uh, welding rod in there and to hold this to our little piece there because then I'll clean it up and it'll look like those other pieces where you know there's no screws going in, it's just going to be clean. Yeah, that looks great. Okay, where we are now, we've got the stays in, those are welded, and we've got the bungs on and the sleeves. So the next step is, Gilby's gonna tack weld these bungs to the sleeves. I didn't get my first Harley until 1989. Okay. Got as a present for uh, producing an album. when this kind of all took over your life? Um, it's, uh, it's kind of funny. When I was, uh, I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. And when I was a young guy, like about eight or 10 years old, across the street from my house was a big biker hangout. You know, it was like a Hell's Angels, right. you know, kind of thing. And my best friend's older brother uh, was a biker. He was in uh, the HAs back then. Yeah. And so I just always saw them. And to me, it was a dream. You know, they were oh, yeah. ultra cool. Yeah. You know, they was, you know, in the set, you know, late 60s, 70s. And, uh, and it just looked so badass. And I was just always like, someday, someday. Yeah. And I'd help them, you know, hand them a wrench or whatever. They're working on their cars or bikes and stuff. And uh, when I moved to California when I was 15 with, with my mother and my brother and sister, and um, uh, when I got my first job at a music store, I had a bike. That's what I did. You know, I didn't have a car. I had a motorcycle. And that's yeah. how I got back and forth to uh, work, uh, to school, everything. So I didn't get my first Harley until 1989. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was my first bike I uh, uh, got as a present for uh, producing an album. Oh, wow. Yep, yeah. yeah. And, that's uh, a hell of a payment. All right, so we got a finished piece here. It took us about three hours and God, it was less than 30 bucks. This thing looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, I'm real happy. Uh, it's not a piece you could buy out of a catalog. Totally. And uh, it's, it's original. It's got some nice new ideas with the sleeves. Absolutely, and you can be proud to say that you made it yourself in your own garage. Well, man, thanks for showing us how to make this. This is really cool, and let's go test this thing out. Yeah, that's gonna be the fun part. No doubt. Well, thanks for joining us on That Motorcycle Show. We'll see you next time.